And I don't seek all the estate. I realize that you set this up, and one of your primary exam, primary arguments for setting this up is to say, for the greater good. I mean, it's a Jesuit slogan. They say, AMDG, for the greater glory of God. That's one of the old sayings of the Jesuit. And you can see the hand of the Jesuits through all the system that was put in place. It was for the greater good of the community. Look, it may be written in your, in your name. It may be created in your estate. But it's for the greater good of everybody and your heirs. You drive on the roads. They don't get made by magic. You go to a hospital. Well, that doesn't kind of appear out of, out of thin air. You, you go to a supermarket and you buy food. Well, that doesn't suddenly appear because someone, you know, made it out the backyard and brought it in. That whole system requires money. It requires infrastructure. It requires investment. And that's what the government's done. And the government's done that by creating this whole accounting. That is their excuse. That is their argument. And to some extent, to some extent, it is an argument that, that can't really be defeated without saying, I wish to be part of a community, but I don't wish to be a key part of that community. A community can't function if everyone is an individual. A community can only survive when we recognize that there must be a symbiosis. So here, we show a maturity. Some may think this is a perversity, but here it is done deliberately as maturity. You're not asking for the entire estate for your family or yourself, nor should you, nor should you. You are merely saying a portion of the estate for the benefit of your family and the remainder, the residual, is for the benefit of the community. That is a sign of someone mature. And if you want to see the separation between yourself, your friends, and others who come across this. Look at those that don't get it and look at those that do. And those that don't get it, those that are seeking revenge, those that are seeking the biggest pot of gold they could ever get, the biggest pot of money they could ever get, these are the destroyers, the anarchists, whether they admit it or not. Watch how they fail. Watch how they cause a system to fight for its death versus those that recognize that only through peace, maturity, uh, uh, alliance, that we see a transition, a, a transition to a better world, which is not based on these absurdities and lies. Okay, fifth point. In accordance with the most sacred 22 canons of law of the Divine Creator, known collectively as Astrum, Eurus, Divini Canonum, also known as the living body of Divine Canon Law, and the highest of all original law, I annex as here too in full to the appendix a recital of terms used in reference within this instrument. Again, a whole bunch of words. What are we saying? The benefit of writing the books of canon law, of creating Astrum Juris Divini Canonum, is that we have the absolute right to identify what form of law, what rules of administration we seek our estate to be managed. And here, we are referring to these canons as the primary law by which the estate is to be managed. Now, the good thing is the canons identify your divine rights, the canons identify your divine trust, your true trust, your superior trust, the canons identify the divine creator, he's the owner of everything. The canons validate and identify all the key beliefs uh, that we're brought up with. The canons identify the principles and foundations of law. The canons expose and repudiate the corruptions of law. And so when we put this down, we are making a clear statement to them, a clear affirmation to them, that they cannot use their statutes by default because we have not identified the rules of administration. That, as we've discussed in the past, is again one of the many, many tricks, many, many tricks used in their system. Now, the other thing we've done is we've identified that in certain key terms, we make clear the definitions. And we'll go through the recitals at the end uh, when we go through them. I want to make one point, seeing that we're talking about Astros Eurus Divini Canonum. Nearly five 
500 years ago, nearly 500 years ago, a man stood up in an unjust world full of trickery and deception, full of slavery and hatred, full of war and corruption, a world ruled by bankers and lawyers, by assassins of the pen. And he said, enough is enough. I'm not your slave. I'm not a creature. God did not grant you those permissions. You do not represent God. You don't represent anything associated with God or the divine creator. You are usurpers. You are liars. And he wrote an instrument that listed a number of points called a thesis. And he nailed that as public notice and public record to a church, All Saints Church. And his name was Martin Luther. And he created a wave of awakening that changed the world forever. Admittedly, the system consumed the good intentions. And I know that this is a sore point that a number of you still find is a point of contention with what we discuss. Because I, I wish to believe the romantic notion as well, that the fight continued, that the Reformation succeeded. But I have no doubt of his intention. And his intention was clear. Your law does not apply to me. Your laws are false. Your laws are based on fraud. And because they're based on fraud, they are null and void. Well, I tell each and every one of you, if you give a damn, then this year and in 15 to 20 days, I will be asking each and every one of us, including myself, to see a repeat of what was done 500 years ago. And if people want to do fancy things on the internet and if people want to be anonymous or they want to have sit-downs or they want to have protests, for God's sake, do something of substance because the law is a key weapon of their system. What Martin Luther didn't have 500 years ago is he didn't have Astrum Juris Divini Canonum. We won't have it finished but the idea is firmly established. And the first seven books will absolutely be ready. And those books alone are more than enough to make a public notice, a public and private notice, pasted, published, put on the internet, put on YouTube, put on Twitter. I, I'm not suggesting people go and, and destroy public property, but nailing to doors, whatever it takes, to get that notice out, it's over. This is the third and final trust of the Roman system that is brought to its knees. In June, we did Pontifex Romanus. In August, we did Attorney Regis, the Eternal Crown. And now we do Convocation. This is the biggie. This is the one they claim your soul. Your soul is claimed through their law. Because your mind continues to follow their law. The only reason they are still in power is because enough people still believe that they are lawfully able to stay there, that they lawfully own all the gold they stole, because they lawfully can hold those uh, marble palaces taken on the sweat and blood because they can continue to run banks and take your homes. This is all based on the belief that they still represent the law. Well, they don't represent the law. I'll have that notice ready this coming week. And I'll be rallying next call to each and every one of us to prepare. This is the time. You want to know the difference between people who take this as a hobby or people that really want to see change, people that mouth of change, 
but really it's just because they're going with the flow and they don't really care, versus real and permanent change. You want to see what Martin Luther, I believe, wanted to see change but couldn't, wasn't ready, hadn't done that work beforehand. You want to see the end and stand up and stand next to Astrum Juris Divini Canon, the 22 books of law, the divine creator, and make that notice published on all saints. October the 31st, make it happen with me. Anyway, that's the fifth point in our will and testament. And then in the sixth point, we state that we have the uh, we say, we I hereby give, grant, devise and bequeath my entire estate in accordance with the following articles. And then we go through the articles. Now, I'll go through some of these in a bit more detail than others. But uh, given the time, I want to make sure that we have this uh, clear. So the first article is the article that is the appointment of the General Executive and Guardian. And it's, it's as simple as this. I hereby announce, anoint, affirm and entrust, in this case, Frank, Anthony o. Collins, in proper case, being a man, not a woman, I'm a man, so being a man, as general executor and guardian and sovereign over my entire estate. And then we list the succession uh, in the event of the death or disablement of Frank Anthony o. Collins. Then we make the point, we say, point five, to the office of general executor and guardian as sovereign over my entire known and unknown estate, I entrust all my powers and authority hereby revoking any and all previous authorities, powers of attorney, powers of guardianship, agency, or personal representation, whether explicit or implied, presumed or knownly granted, by signature name, fair use, or some other legal device. Okay, well that is as powerful a revocation of power of attorney as you can possibly do. And then point six, let me explain this. Point six says, to ensure the peaceful habitation of the estate. Remember what private international law, the Geneva Convention and the Hague Convention does to us, creating us as enemy combatants. Right? The respect of its, of its boundaries and property. The general executive and guardian is further empowered to enter into such foreign treaties and agreements that give formal recognition to the sovereign rights and protections afforded the estate, including but not limited to public affirmation as an ally to the Queen of Great Britain and her heirs and successors. Now, if you go and have a look, you'll find that Great Britain is spoken of but is no longer applied. Why? Because all caps United Kingdom is a corporation. It is, the, it is a representation of the Crown Corporation. Well, why would we bother to make ourselves an ally of the Queen of Great Britain and her heirs and successors? Well, quite simply, uh, I, I don't think unless you have an army or a militia behind you that you have the force to protect the sovereignty of your estate. And even if you did, uh, one can only really effectively manage the estate if one is in the state of peace. If one is in the state of war, then there, under private international law, is a whole range of, of uh, rules that can uh, conduct the uh, prosecution of war between the states, and that's what it is, it's a war between the states, which uh, allows one estate to temporarily possess, consume, or drain your estate. And you don't want to be in that position. You don't want to be at war with the Roman system. We're not going to be at war with the Roman system when we declare October 31st that their laws ended. We're just telling them a fact. It's ended. But as this is your expression of will as a man or a woman, one should identify that you want to ultimately be at peace. And here's the brilliance of being an ally of the Queen, of the real Queen, not of the corporation, is that if you recall last week, I made a very, very important point. The services and functions and procedures of the corporation depend upon the existing framework of public acts. If the public act ceases, 
the corporate act 